God knows that a day like this you will be here and God has something for you. Do you believe it? I said nothing happened to him by what? As then. He knows you'll be here and he has something for you. And all over the world, wherever they are watching me now, I'm talking to them, God has something for you. And he knows that you are here, he will do something for you. Praise the Lord. And so take notes. For some time now, there are some things that is going on which you must hear from me all over the world. Because we must address the issue so that we will go on to serve our God. Praise the Lord. And none of you that are here or watching me all over the world will have any reason to panic. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 10, please open your Bible. Let us read. Isaiah 43. I read verse 10. 43 and verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall be after me. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me there is no savior. I have declared, I have said, I have showed, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is no that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk. And who shall let it? And Sammy. Now, look at the book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. 1 John chapter 3. I read verse 8. Please open your Bible. Let us read. 1 John chapter 3. And verse 8. And it reads. First John chapter 3 verse 8 He that committed sin is of the devil For the devil sinned from the beginning For this purpose That's why I'm interested now For this purpose The Son of God was manifested That he might destroy the works of the devil For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Please, mark that word. Jesus was manifested to do what? Destroy the works of the devil. Now, look at John chapter 19 and verse 30. John chapter 19. I read verse 30. Please look at your Bible or read with somebody by your side. Very important. Chapter 19 and verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. Stop there. It is finished. Remember, he came for a purpose. Am I right? God brought him for a purpose, am I right? And he says, God said, I will walk and who shall 
collect it? Who will hinder it? Who will revise it? Now, listen to me. And the Bible said, for, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that they might destroy the works of the devil. And in John chapter 19, verse 30, he said, It is finished. Now, I'm talking to you from this chapter, some verses. I'm bringing the topic. My topic says, It is over. Do you remember my topic? I said it is over. Are you panicking? Are you worried? Because of the prevailing situation in the land, all over the world, there is nothing to worry about. Are you hearing me? Jesus has finished the work at the cross of Calvary. Are you hearing me? Uh, maybe you are worried that this thing will do you know, this will happen, that will happen, that will happen, and that's the works of the devil. It is finished and it is over. Are you hearing me? So you need to pay attention because I've come to address this matter. And I'm not addressing this matter just here, I'm addressing it all over the world. And I believe that everywhere now they are watching this cable. It is over. Praise the Lord. When I say this, your mind went to somewhere. But I'm take, going to take you there. Where your, your mind did not go to. Praise the Lord. I said your mind went somewhere, but I'm going to take you the area that your mind did not go to. So pay attention. Everyone that is in this place now, whether you're a new member or old member, maybe a born again Christian or not, whether you're a worker in the house of God, a pastor, a leader, this message is for you. Are you hearing me? You should know that whatever is happening today will soon be over. Are you hearing me? Coronavirus will soon be over. Uh -huh. I know. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know that this is the place your mind is going to. Now, I am telling you, coronavirus will soon be over. If you take your mind to my message on Thursday, I told you that from that Thursday, coronavirus will be cured. I told you on Thursday, you listen to me, I caused coronavirus. I, I don't know whether you heard me. And I said that from that Thursday, that coronavirus be cured, we begin to be cured everywhere. Now, yesterday, the first people, the first man that brought me to Nigeria was cured. Amen. When you go home, you go and buy the newspaper for the nation. You see the doctors that were that all of them were in the front page with the man, showing that the man is completely cured, discharged. So the news we're hearing now is going to be a news of encouragement. God has stepped in and it is over. Are you hearing me? And even after Thursday, even the people in America say, Crown Queen can cure it. Didn't you hear it? Now, I want to let you know it will soon be over. That is where your mind is. So I have just make you to relax your mind. Praise the Lord. Now, you need to pay attention. Also, that thing that is happening is the fulfillment of the end time prophecies. 
concerning the rapture, the coming of Jesus Christ, the second time to take the people of God to heaven. Now, look at the Bible. In Matthew 24, let's read. Matthew chapter 24. Please open your Bible. I read from verse 7. Matthew 24, verse 7. And for nature shall rise against nature, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Think about that. Famine means economic restriction. Now, look, look at what follows. Pestilence. Pestilences, which means you talk about Ebola, you talk about HIV, you talk about coronavirus. Now, all this is fulfilling prophecy. Now, if you look at that place, it says, look at that place where are in. It mentioned again, it said, an earthquake in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Sorrow to people of God? No. Sorrow to those who will not make the rapture. The beginning of sorrow for those who will be here when the saints, when the believer has gone, they will sorrow and sorrow until they sorrow forever in sorrow to ever in hell fire. Please pay attention. I said, if you look at that, I said, all these are the beginning of what? Not for you, but our children of God. It is going to be sorrow, beginning of sorrow, for those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord, as their personal Savior all over the world. They will sorrow to hellfire and sorrow from eternity to eternity if the trumpet sounds. So you need to pay attention. I want you to take note. So for us, we should have balanced knowledge. That nothing happens to God by accident. If this thing is happening today, you must know that God knows about it. Please, somebody should answer me. If you, you must know that God knows that there is something called what? Coronavirus. And it, it must take place this time. So, nothing happened to him by what? accident. He knows about it. Rather, we should take note of this. This thing that is happening now, it is working for our good. Ah, somebody will say, what are you talking? Yes, it is for our good. If you know the reason for the prophecies, and it is happening now, it is informing you that Jesus is coming very soon. So you have to get ready. I don't know whether you're afraid what I'm making. So it is working for our good. So that you can sit up. So it can search your life. So it can amend your ways. And make sure that nothing is nothing. is standing between you and who? I didn't hear you. Now, listen to me. Look at Romans chapter 8. Please open your Bible. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. How many things? Please answer me. How many things work together for good? Including what? Yes, I thank God for your understanding. Including what? Is he involved among all things? Now, you shouldn't panic. If you be a Christian, a child of God, all things work together for good to them that loves God. Do you love God? Yeah. Then it is working for our good. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So you need to pay attention. 
Remember the days of Egyptians or Egyptian bondage. I want to take note of that. From the day God visited his people to announce that he has remembered their affliction. He has remembered what they are passing through. He has come down to take them out of Egypt. From that very day, I want to let you know their problem in the land of Egypt was over. Oh, please, pay attention. I hope, I hope you are not distracted. Remember, the Israelites were in Egypt for 430 years. And they were slaves. And they were, they were like, any dirty work is what they are doing. And they are being afflicted and tormented and oppressed. And they suffer so much in the land of Egypt. Until God was grieved, saw what that was going through, and came down. Look at your Bible. Exodus chapter 3. Please look at your Bible. I read from verse 6. Exodus chapter 3. Verse 6. Do you have Bible? Okay, look at verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Look at verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. I have heard their cry by reason of their past masters, for I know their sorrows. He said, I have heard their cry because of what Egyptians were doing unto them. And he said, I know their sorrows. And they have suffered so much at the hand of the Egyptians. And he said, that's why I have come. That's why I have visited you. And look at what, look at verse 8. Verse 8. And I am come down to deliver thee out of the land, out of the hand of the, hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land, unto a good land, unto a large Unto a land flown with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. He said, I'm bringing you out of Egypt and I'm going to give you seven hidden nations. And the land I'm taking you to is a land flowing with milk and honey. And it's a good land and a large land. Now, listen to me. He was taking them to Canaan, a good place where God cares for, a miniature heaven, where God eyes is always upon from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, where everything there was a gift, a not by struggle. God was taking them out of Egypt to a type of heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, from the day God came down, and told the Moses about this matter. That was the end of their problem. The end of their sorrow. The end of their problem. In fact, it was then their problem was over. Because when you have any problem and you have means or solution, you will not bother yourself. If you have hope of freedom, my friend, you will rejoice. Because if somebody said, I'm, I'm coming now. I have what you are going through. And the person is an the man, a man of authority and somebody that is lesser power is holding the person. And the person said, okay, um, you know, tell the person I'm coming. Um, and this person is maybe a commissioner or 
uh, you know, big person, the police or IG or what. I say, now nah, tell the person I'm coming. My friend, that day, wherever you are, is the day your problem was over. Hearing the name of that person, eh? The people that are holding you will be in trouble. Oh my God! I don't know where they are first from again. That somebody is holding you, and God from heaven said, "I have come down to deliver you." That is the end of your problem. Can I hear you say Amen? So, for believers, believers, choosing ones. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you have suffered. Believers listening to me all over the world. I don't know what you are going through. What I want to bring to you as information is this. This is the time of our redemption. Do you hear me? And our redemption is at hand. Are you hearing me? If you look at Luke chapter 21 and verse 28, please look at the Bible. Luke 21 and verse 28. Please open your very important 21 and verse 28. And when these things began to come to pass, take note, then do what? Look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption dread near. When these things, these signs, then these prophecies are being fulfilled, do what? Do, do what? Look up. Your redemption is what? At the hand. It see you, people of God, all over the world. Your redemption is at hand. Did you hear me? Please pay attention because after this information, you'll be stronger. I say you'll be stronger. You will overcome. I don't know what they are going through. All I want you to understand, look up. Your redemption is at hand. Did you hear me? So no matter the calamities that is happening in this present world, there is nothing for you as a believer to worry about. You don't need to worry yourself at all, at all. We are in Goshen. We are in choosing. It is a place of safety. No matter the calamity, you are protected. Are you hearing me? In Goshen, God kept his people there in time when God visited the Israelites. When God came to bring them out, and God decided to deal with the Egyptians, He kept them where? I didn't hear you again. He kept them in Goshen. And all the calamity that was coming upon the Egyptians, He never, a lot of them crossed into Goshen. He see you. You are in choosing. All this calamity will never cross into choosing. Believers, these calamities are not for you. If you believe in, say amen. Now, look at Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. Exodus chapter 8. Reading verse 22. I read Exodus 8 and verse 22. And it reads. And I will severe, severe in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swans of fly shall be there, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. He said, I am going to separate the land of Goshen where my people is, that the swans of fly that will ravage the land of Egypt. No single one will enter. I'm not hearing you again. No single one will enter Goshen. So, no matter the calamity upon the Egyptians, my people shall be protected. Chosen people, believers, 
you are protected. Don't panic. Those that panic and fear is because of what? They don't believe God. They don't know God. If you know God, you should not panic. You should not fear. Because fear is saying there is no God. But faith is saying there is God. Are you hearing me? Because there is God. Nothing to worry. Nothing to fear. You are in Goshen. You are in choosing. You are protected. In chapter 9 of Exodus, verse 26, look at the Bible. Chapter 9, chapter 9, fear of evil, fear of devil is saying that there is no God. If you believe God, you shouldn't fear evil, you shouldn't fear the devil. God is greater than them. God is more than them. Chapter 9, verse 26. Let's see. I still want to point out the issue of Goshen. Verse 26. Only in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were, was there no war. Hey, this hell was what ravaged the land of Egypt. But none of them crossed where? I want to hear from you. Go chain. Go chain. No single one. No hay that touched the dead. No, none of the calamity that entered there. You are chosen. You are protected. Do you hear me? Now, pay attention. All these diseases like COVID-19 and etc. are not for us. Yeah. They do hear me, children of God. Yeah. COVID 19 and etc. and all that was, they are not for me and for you. Yeah. If you believe it, say amen. Yeah. For me and for you, look at the good information. It is over. Yeah. Some of you will be asking, what is over? Living in bondage is over. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Living in bondage in this world or Egypt is over. For the trumpet is about to sound. Besides, this number one plague will soon be over. How many plagues that God visited Egypt with? Plague. This is number one. <laughs> number one plague will soon be over. Uh, are you afraid? No. No. All I want to let you know is, is alerting you that the trumpet is about to sound. I hope you are hearing me. Now, what is, it's a good thing, is yeah? just like announcing independence, saying that you are going to be free. Will you be sorrowful that you are going to be free? I, I'm not hearing you again. No, 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 no. When this announcement first came to the Egypt, to the Israelites in the land of Egypt, they were happy that God had visited these people and is about to bring them out. They were not sorrowful. So, no matter the means God came with to deliver them, they will not bother the same because it will not affect them. I don't know whether I'm clear about what I'm The ten place is not for them. All they know that this time it is for their good. God is coming to take them out. And he's going to use signs. He's going to use wonders to deal with the Egyptians so that they will release them to God. Praise the Lord. You see, this is the only disease that has kept the whole world, that has shook the world. That is number one sign. The world doesn't believe, they don't fear. In fact, they are afraid of disease now. They are not afraid of God, they are not afraid of sin. God will teach them lessons. Do you hear what I'm saying? Only one sign, the whole world is what? 
Jerky, 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 jerky. Only one sign, one thing. Corona virus. Everywhere. Hey. Fear God. I want to tell people of God here. Do what? God is awesome. You don't de you don't dare him. He has made people both both big and small, white and black, rich and poor, president and governors, and the, the people that are government. Everybody is checking. Because of how many diseases? It will soon be because we are pastor. We are here. We are still here. We have, we have caused it. We have caused that disease. And it must go. The cure is everywhere now. Are you hearing me? Now, it will soon be over. But there is something I want to remind you. Then, if template is coming and one is released and the whole world is checking, even if this one go, remember how many? For you, you have information, you know what is happening, you shouldn't panic, it's not for you. Uh -uh. Did you understand what I'm saying? It is for them. When God visited the Egyptian with ten plagues, was it for the Israelites? They were in Goshen enjoying themselves. They had light where they were having darkness and plagues and destruction and problem, flies, frog, uh, water turning to blood, a lot. Calamities. And they were in their land. Nothing evil was happening there. It's see you. No evil shall happen in your family. People of God all over the world watching. Don't panic. It is not for you. It is for them to repent and to turn to the Lord. And the Lord will show them mercy. If they refuse to repent, let them wait for more, more. If the world refuses to repent from sin, from wickedness, from turning away from God, from you know giving themselves over to occultism, wickedness, killing, corruption, let them wait for what? More. The Lord used to list it. Do you know the people of the world? They don't like to put anything Christianity in their television, in their radio, in their anything God is doing anywhere. About this time around, <laughs> they are afraid. They will soon ask for God before the trumpet sound. Do you hear me? I said they will soon ask for who? Ah, it is just one plague, one. One is released out of ten. But then let's move forward. Let's consider this message under the flowing two subheadings. The reason, preparation, and the danger of neglect. Two, I expect a response and warning. Let's go to point number one. The reasons, preparation, if you. For many shall come in my name. Say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, let's see verse 7 and 8. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. And pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, all these are what? The beginning of sorrow. Sorrow for which people? Unbelievers that refuse to live. Of course, 
now they are sorrowing. Am I right? Answer me now. Yes, they are sorrowing because of what? Coronavirus. Don't sorrow with them. You don't hear me. Pestilences and famine, economy recession will cause them sorrow. And that's what God allowed to show them that his coming is at hand. And if that be the case, we should understand. We should be looking down. Look up for your redemption. Thread near. Do you hear me? The, your redemption, your freedom, the, the rapture of the saints is coming at hand. Don't more, more, don't be sorrowful, don't cry, don't begin to complain. What did he do? Bless the Lord. Pray for the sinners, for the people of the world to repent. I'll bring you, I'll come to that point. Praise the Lord. So, they are sorrowing because the prophecies is being what? Fulfilled. Please look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy, very important. Chapter 3, remember, we are trying to find out the prophecies that characterize the end time, the coming of Jesus. And when we see those things, we are able to know the time we are into and they are able to take a proper stance on how we should live our life. Chapter 3, verse 1. This know also. Chapter 3, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. And I read, this know also that in the last day, perilous time shall come, dangerous time. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Is it happening now? Covetous. Is it happening now? Boasters, proud, and look at what followed. Blasphemers. Is it happening now? Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Is it happening now? Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Do they love good people now? No, they despise them. If they see you carrying by, but you are living right, and nobody will, nobody will regard you. They despise those that are good. Showing us that we are really in the last days which is called perilous and dangerous times. Now, look at what followed in verse 5. For terror thoughts, heady, high-minded, please, amen, high-minded now, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Is it happening? And then he said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such thought away. My brothers and sisters, all this evil is happening in our very eyes. Is it happening? Yes. Telling you that the coming of Jesus is what? Very near, even at hand. And because of this coronavirus, which God allowed, because if God does not allow it, it will never happen. Do you agree with me? God allowed it, otherwise it can never manifest. Which God allowed today, it is a clear sign that He has come to deliver us with this sign. God has come with number one sign to deliver His people. Praise the Lord. We have seen Exodus, I'm not reading, chapter 3, verse 6 to 8, to verse 9. It is a happy moment. Happy, happy moment for us because our God is magnified. The whole world can now, they can now know that there is one God in heaven that rules heaven and earth. Who can kill the whole world if he desire? Who can destroy the whole world? I said there is one God, only one God that can decide today to destroy everybody. My friend, is it true? Uh -uh. In the days of Noah, he saved Noah and their family and destroyed the whole world there. In the days of Lot, he brought them out of Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed the people with fire. Only one God 
has this power to do it. The devil does not have it. Praise the Lord. So I want to let you know what is happening now. If one thing like this can check the whole world, they should be afraid. And I'm, I'm telling you, they are afraid. I'm not hearing you again. I said the world is what? So much afraid. And they are beginning to realize there is power that passes power. There is God that rules in the kingdom of men. So, take note. The whole world can now know, as I told you, there is God. And now what? Our bondage in this world is what? It is over. Are you hearing me? Everybody should know that Jesus Christ has paid the price for me and for you. And now we are redeemed. Now that he is coming to take us home and the sign is there, our problem is over. Honestly. Praise the Lord. So take note. I don't know what you are passing through. Don't be afraid. Now, and for this number one sign, honestly, it will be over. Is the coronavirus is as much as dead? I said coronavirus is what? Is dead. Is a dead disease. I said what? Is a de is dead and it is a sign. So God is taking it away. No man can take the glory. Are you hearing me? You have heard that chloroquine can cure it. Does chloroquine cost how much? Praise the Lord. Therefore, it is God taking it away. It is not anything. It is who? God that allowed it and decided to do what? Take it away. So, it will soon be what? Are you still hearing me? Maybe you are waiting for me to pray be healed. And then you are happy. This one is more, this is more than be healed. Are you hearing me? He see you. You need to be informed so that you will not be panicking like unbelievers. Praise the Lord. So, I want to let you know that this matter will soon be what? But more are... Uh, <laughs> this one, some people may not like to hear this one. But more are coming very soon because God wants to save the whole world. And with this sign, it is only the thing that can make them to do what? Repent. Whoever that must be saved, it is these signs that make the person say, God, I surrender. And anybody who refuses to surrender after these signs, that person will sorrow forever. Let me ask you this question. Does God love sinners? Does God love everybody? And if he loves them, he will do something that will make them to be what? The Bible says, For God so loved the world, according to John chapter 3, verse 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God loved every soul. Praise the Lord. So what is happening now is a demonstration of what? Love. If you allow them in their prosperity, in their riches, if you allow them and nothing is disturbing them, all of them will do what? Go to hell fire. All of them will perish. They will not serve God. So but God is not a man. Praise the Lord. So there is nothing to worry about for it is not for us we are in good chain called what chosen chosen we are where in chosen so remember exodus 8 verse 22 he said i have i have separated my people and my people are where in good chain 
and no evil shall happen there. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Likewise, in Exodus chapter 9, verse 26, he's still talking about no plague shall enter Goshen. Are you in Goshen? Are you in Goshen? You are protected. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only thing is that He goes in different ways. But as for God, He's the same forever. Praise the Lord. I say you are aware. I didn't hear you again. Chosen people, all of you are in good shape. Take notes. What we should do, or we should be doing right now, is to prepare, to ensure purity, to ensure righteousness, holiness, inside and inside. If you have a slider, come back to faith. If you are a sinner, repent and renounce your evil. If you're a believer that is a compromiser, a believer that is inconsistent in righteousness, do something now. This is the time of what? I didn't hear you. Preparation. Preparation. What do I call it? If a great event is about to take place, why you are going to meet high place person in the society? and you will be there. What do you do? You go to him anyhow. Please answer me. Is there any being greater than God? If you prepare to meet human being, then you must prepare to meet who? Therefore, time that is left for me and for you is what? Prepare to meet our Messiah, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, and to be with our God forever and ever. We must do what? I didn't hear you again. We must ensure the mark of the blood in our hearts. Because God says something in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Exodus, please let's see it, very important. Chapter 12, verse 13. When God visited Egypt, he made them to understand that they must sprinkle a blood of a lamb without blemish in their doorposts. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Chapter 12, verse 13. Please open your Bible and read it. It says, Chapter 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. And verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Is it clear? But now, ensure that you are washed in the blood of Jesus. That means, ensure that you are soundly saved. Ensure that you are what? You are saved. By the means of what? The blood of Jesus. If you are redeemed and washed by the blood of Jesus, and you go on to live right, I'm assuring you, all these calamities can never enter your house. Can I hear you say amen? amen? And when God is going to take his people, he will take you home because you are washed in the blood of Jesus. So, take note of that. Praise the Lord. Besides, now you are saved. Many people are saved and born again and children of God indeed. There is something else to do. While you are preparing, remember there are many souls that are not yet saved. 
While you are preparing yourself, remember your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your uncle. Remember your children. Remember your relations. Remember all the sinners all over the world. Also pray for them and reach out to them. I don't know where they are praying for Tamaki. While you are waiting, preparing, there is something else to do. We must go everywhere preaching the gospel. And for anyone that will neglect this preparation, such person will regret doing that. Are you hearing me? We must go everywhere preaching and preaching that others may be saved. Every day, preaching season and out of season. That others may be what? Saved. And the Lord will bless you. I say go and preach. Don't forget, we are ambassadors of who? Jesus Christ. What was his commission to us? Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every preacher. Go and preach. Now, take note. While we are preaching, let us make sure nothing is standing between us and God. If you are, you know, running this race, and then there is unrighteousness, then you'll be like a foolish virgin. A foolish virgin who was waiting for the bridegroom, but there was no oil in the lamp. Let us be able to be like a, a wise, the five wise virgins who had a lamb and had oil so that when the bridegroom come, you will be among those who will enter. Because at that day, when Jesus shall come, there shall be no room for what? Preparation, repentance, amendment. So make sure while you are running this race that nothing is standing between you and God now. For we don't know the hour when the trumpet shall sound. Do you hear me? Look at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. I read from verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and sleep. And at midnight, at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgin arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. For our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that said, And buy for yourselves. And why they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut afterward came also the other virgin saying lord lord open to us but he answered and said unto and said very very i know you not that was all those five foolish virgins they couldn't make it let it not be when the trumpet shall sound, you want to repent and say, God, show me, I'm sorry. I repent, I confess my sin. There will be no room for that. 
it is a matter of a moment and the matter will be all over repent now so that that day you will not be like a foolish virgin be ready at all time because we don't know the hour the Lord shall come praise the Lord look at verse 13 watch and watch therefore for you know not for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh be watchful that takes to point number two I expect a response and warning no one should panic nor fear for the present plague it is a sign and warning to unbelievers and worldly people who isolate God for other gods of this world. Do you know that unbelievers, <laughs> many of them have left God. They don't want to know about God. They don't want to fear God. Many of them are after football. Many of them are after waiting and eating and drinking. Many of them are after money. Many of them have followed strange gods. The things of this world. They are dead. In fact, listen to me. Many people that are not yet saved, they are doing what they like. They don't fear God at all. At all. In fact, they act like God. They act as if though that they are the final authority. They can do what they want. But this coronavirus. <laughs> You should know. If you look at the television, you see that outside the country where football was a big god, eh? there was a ball match football that was played. No single. <laughs> I don't know whether you saw it. It's only the, the those that are playing and the and the official. The whole stadium was empty. Why are they running? God made them afraid. There was basketball. Only the people. The whole standing was empty. No single human being. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God has a reason to make them afraid. If not so, they can never, they can never fear. They will continue to do what they like. So, take note. What you are seeing, God allowed it. But you, a child of God, don't behave like what? I didn't hear you. Don't be behave like them, as unbeliever. I want to let you know that this plague in one month and everywhere is affected with them for them to see the finger of God to know that God can do anything at any time just one plague one, one sign the whole people are closing their border closing everywhere closing. I wonder before you know it the market will close yes but church is affected. Market may soon what? Market will close, and then you'll be eating it and stay inside the house, cooking what you had before. But don't panic. We are cost it. It will die. You will survive it. It is not for you. Imagine a station where nobody goes to buy something again. What will you keep in the house to eat? Just one plague. One. One. Supposing God released ten. It happened in Egypt at the point that the Egyptian says, No, you know that Egypt is what? Destroyed. Egypt was completely destroyed because of the ten plagues. So I want to let you know that this time around, more is coming on. Hmm. The only solution is everybody should do what? Run to the Lord, repent and amend their ways. That is the only solution. Everybody should seek for Jesus 
I accept him as their Lord, as their personal Savior. That is the only solution. I mean, to live right, make their way right. That is the only solution. Every other solution is, <laughs> is a futile solution. So, you want them to see the finger of God on the wall. You want them to know that the king is what? The king is coming. The Lord of Lords, our Savior, our Messiah, our Redeemer. I want to let you know He is coming. And our slavery or bondage in this world is what? Over. And it is over. Children of God, rejoice. Great <laughs> Amen. Rejoice. Yes. Why are you rejoicing? Because your freedom is announced. You know that your sorrow is what? Over. And because it is over, it's time for you to rejoice. Because I want to let you know, when Moses broke the news that God had visited his people, it was joy. Amen. So, if you're a child of God, don't mourn the matter. Don't cry. Don't panic. For all things work together for good to them that lost God. Do you love God? God allowed it. Praise the Lord. So, we should rejoice and prepare to meet our Savior. Are you hearing me? In Amos chapter 4 verse 12. Amos chapter 4 verse 12. Look at your Bible. Chapter 4, verse 12. It reads, verse 12. Therefore, those will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Do what? Prepare to meet your God. There is need for what? Preparation. Why is it that we must prepare? Listen to me. Our God is holy. Without holiness, no eyes shall see him. Do you hear me? In First Peter chapter 1, let's see. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Look at your Bible. We should prepare. It's not a man. We should prepare purity and righteousness. We should prepare ensuring holiness inside and outside. First Peter chapter three, chapter one verse fifteen. Chapter one and verse fifteen. But I see which had called you is holy. So be holy in all manner of conversation. Look about sixteen because it is written. Be ye holy, for I the Lord your God, I am holy. God is what? If you want to meet him, what do you do? Answer me. Be holy. Why? Is holy. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, and verse 14. And he says, Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no eye shall see the Lord. So let's make sure we maintain purity, peace with men, peace with God, holiness inside and outside, in order to be to meet with Him and to live with Him forever and ever. Remember, once you have amended the way, once you are saved and washed by the blood of Jesus. You must maintain purity, holiness, because God we are waiting to see is a holy God. God we are waiting to do away with him forever is the holy God. And without holiness, no eye shall see the Lord. So prepare to meet your God. Instead of panicking, instead of crying, instead of talking of disease, talk about God. Search your life and mend your ways. Talk about the power of God. 
Are you hearing me? Don't magnify disease. It's nothing. Are you hearing me? Talk about what your God can do. Praise the Lord. Without holiness, no eyes shall see the Lord. So, our sojourn here, our suffering here is over. And this one sign, I've told you, it will soon be over. But as I told you before, other signs will do all come, it will follow. But there is nothing to worry about. It is for them, for unbelievers, and not for us, because we are protected in choosing. I, as the Goshen of old. So we should help to reach people outside the kingdom. Want them and win them into the kingdom. We should extend the arm of love. Because the Bible says, Why were you sinners? What happened? Christ died for us. Now, why those who are sinners? Let's love them. They don't know what they're doing, they don't know what they're into. Let's pray for them, let's preach to them, let us win them so they will come into choosing and be saved. Praise the Lord. So let's reach to all the sinners around us. Let us evangelize. Preaching now. All of them are ready to hear you. You know the situation now. Do you know the situation? All of them, both small and the big, everyone wants to hear you. If you tell them that Jesus saved now, they will tell you how. They want to hear. But if you tell them before, when nothing, nothing was pinching them, they will, they will look down on you. So, this is opportunity call. Are you hearing me? Take advantage, do what? Preach in season and out of season. Remember, in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, what did the Bible say? Please open your Bible. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. He said, Follow me, and I will make you features of men. The reason we are following him is for him to use us to win others into the kingdom. Follow, in fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, he said, We are ambassadors of Christ. What was Christ doing? Who was he representing? Is he not God and heaven? Uh, what was he doing? Seeking to save the lost. Let us go and do what? Preach. In Mark chapter 16 verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's go and do what? I'm not hearing you again. Let's go and preach. That is our responsibility. In John chapter 15 verse 16. Please open your Bible. It says, you have not chosen me. I've chosen you that you should be a fruit. And your fruit may remain. Your fruit should remain. That you may ask anything. And God Almighty will give it to you. So, God has chosen you to go and bear fruit. Go and win them. He has made us pictures of men. So, let us ensure purity and holiness on every side. And any person that will declare this warning will affect the consequences and internal destruction. I pray it shall never be your portion. Internal destruction, consequences of going to hell fire will never be our portion in Jesus' name. If you look at Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, let's read from verse 43. The possible consequences of rejecting this message and living your life anyhow, whoever you may be. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life meant than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Verse 45. And if thy, if thy food offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life than having 
two feet to be cast into hell into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where the one dieth not and the fire is not quenched and if thy eye offend thee pluck it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire anything that make you to miss heaven anything that make you to enter hell fire do what? take it away because it is going to be forever and ever. Fire that burns there can never be quenched. The worm that eats people there can never die from eternity to eternity. So why not escape now? Have you not heard? In the Bible says in Psalm 9, verse 17. Please look at your Bible. Psalm 9, verse 17. Psalm. It says, and I read. Psalm chapter 9 and verse 17. Look at this. The wicked shall be thrown into hell, and all the nations that forget God. You see, all this nation of the world that forget God are conscious of coronavirus. If they refuse to turn to God, they will. First, the real danger. The Bible says, nation that forget God shall be cast into hell. In where the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. Let me ask you this question. The danger of hell fire and coronavirus, which one is greater? I'm not hearing you again. Hell fire. So, you need to make sure you escape and mend your ways so that helpful at last shall be your portion. Can I hear you say amen? amen? My prayer for all of you that are hearing me is that no one after hearing this kind of message will continue to fear coronavirus. And magnify coronavirus and will isolate God. Go forbid. We should fear God and run away from sin. And God Almighty will protect us from what? Coronavirus. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Therefore, coronavirus, no. The Bible says, He that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. And he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over the powers of enemies, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Including what? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, He will preserve you from all evil. He will preserve your going out and coming in from this time even forever. My friend, God will preserve you. God will protect you. All of you that are struggling and struggling how to end coronavirus, remember, except the Lord build the house, the build that build but in vain. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waited but in vain. Depend on God, He will give you final solution. Can somebody say Amen? So what everybody needs all over the world, return to him in repentance and renounce your wickedness and give your life to Jesus Christ. He died for you. He shed his blood for you. He suffered for you. And he died and rose again for justification. Repent and renounce your evil. Accept you as a Lord, as a personal savior. The end of all your crises and suffering forever shall come upon you in Jesus' name. So, as I round up now in this first exhortation, 